So everyone understands that alcohol is haram, but not everyone really understands why. Like, why not have a little fun, right? A little won't hurt, right? Well, today I'll help you to understand why it's haram and why I think that it should be haram based on science and logic. So first, from a purely Islamic perspective, why is alcohol haram? First of all, in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Maidah, chapter number 5, verse number 90, Allah says that intoxicants are evil of shaitan's handiwork and that they should be shunned that you may be successful. And yeah, this means that by abstaining from alcohol, you become more successful both in this life and in the next. And I'll go over scientific and logical reasons for why that's true later on. There's also a of course, many hadiths that forbid the consumption of alcohol and other intoxicants. In one of them, the Prophet peace be upon him said, whatever causes intoxication in large amounts, a small amount is also unlawful. This means that you can't even have one drink or one hit of the joint because you'll be about just as sinful as the passed out drunk outside the corner shop or the blaze dude greening out the party. Again, later on, I'll go over scientific reasons for why you shouldn't even have a small amount of alcohol according to science. And finally, in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number five, verse number 219, Allah says that there is great evil in intoxicants. He also acknowledges that there are benefits to intoxicants, but he says that the negatives of intoxicants outweigh the benefits. And wouldn't you know it, that is basically identical to the modern scientific consensus that organizations like the Harvard School of Public Health, the World Health Organization, and the World Cancer Organization have agreed upon. Now you may be thinking, benefits? There's benefits to intoxicants? Yes, bro. Moderate alcohol intake, keyword is moderate, has been shown to have slight benefits for your cardiovascular health, particularly in beer and wine, and especially wine, because they contain high amounts of antioxidants, which are good for you. There are also some cardiovascular benefits seen from drinking other alcoholic beverages like gin, whiskey, vodka, though the reason for their benefits aren't fully clear because they don't have as many antioxidants as beer and wine. Alcohol has also been shown to help with type 2 diabetes because of the increased insulin resistance linked to polyphenols in red wine, beer, and most other fermented alcoholic beverages. And it's not just alcohol. Curing treatment-resistant depression with ketamine, uh, MDMA-assisted therapy, CBD and weed, microdosing psychedelics, all of these things are ways that intoxicants have been shown to be beneficial to some people. <gasps> Drugs are good for you. Oh yeah, wag one mate, you doing drops today, yeah? <laughs> Alright, sound mate, I'll have three grams of <laughs> Flippin' ate that guy. Anyways, no, this is not to say that drugs are good for you. Because these benefits are only observed under like strict scientific circumstances where everything like controls and dosages and potencies are controlled for. And that's without even considering that the negatives of these drugs vastly outweigh the positive effects. So I've just given you all of these reasons for why alcohol is good for you. And now here's a truckload of ways that alcohol isn't so good for you. Not even in small amounts. Firstly, alcohol is a group one carcinogen, meaning it's just about as cancer causing as asbestos, arsenic, and 237 tetrachlorobenzodioxin. I don't know what the last one is, but it sounds scary. But anyways, alcohol has been attributed to at least seven types of cancer. Of course, the more you drink, the higher your risk is. Alcohol also gives you liver damage, digestive issues, brain damage, cognitive impairments, and ironically, heart problems, which is completely contradictory to the cardiovascular benefits, but alcohol also gives you anxiety, depression, and increases chances of other mental health illnesses. Also, so far, I'm literally only talking about light to moderate drinking. When you get into binge drinking or alcoholism, you might have financial problems because of having to buy all of that alcohol and making irresponsible decisions under the influence. Your relationships will crumble, you can have accidents, or you could just overdose and die. But anyways, talking about heavy drinking isn't really useful because everyone knows that it's bad for you, and nobody starts drinking with the attention of becoming a heavy drinker. But the thing is, stuff can happen. Once you start drinking a little bit, you're susceptible to becoming a binge drinker because all it takes is one crazy weekend or a period of depression and then you could start drinking more and then that could lead to some kind of dependency and then boom, you're an alcoholic. <laughs> With all that said, I actually have a question to the disbelievers. Since we know that verse 219 of Surah Al-Baqarah is true and there are benefits and negatives to intoxicants but the negatives outweigh the benefits, if somebody else who isn't God wrote that, how could they have known that? How could they have known that there are slight benefits to intoxicants? And if they did know that they can be good for you, how did they know that it could be bad for you? And let's say somehow, without all of these huge observational studies or control tests or testing for variables or other scientific methods, let's say that somehow they knew that alcohol can be good for you and it could be bad for you. How could they have known that the negatives outweigh the benefits? It just kind of doesn't make sense. They didn't know it's from God and the Quran has so many other miracles that you uh, hate uh, disbelievers just 
hate on for no reason. So look into it. But anyways, going back to Surah Al-Maida, chapter number five, verse number 90, Allah says that you should abstain so that you may be successful. And this is pretty intuitive, right? Most people know that alcoholism or drug addiction are not typically traits of successful people. And I was going to tell you about how moderate drinking and light drinking can make you less successful, it can make you have a lower lifespan and all of that, but this video is getting a little bit long and honestly, I'm quite tired. And also because not everybody has the same idea of success. If I were to tell you about the financial successes, social successes and all of that, it would kind of muggle it up because the success that the Quran is most likely talking about is success in the afterlife. and that's the success that most Muslims are primarily concerned about. Because obviously having a good time eternally after this life is more important to most people than maybe having a hundred nice years here. But anyways, I mentioned a lot of scientific stuff in this video and I'm not a scientist, so some of the tiny little details may be inaccurate, but the basic gist of the video is still there. Not drinking is better in every conceivable way than drinking, especially to Muslims. And any scientist will agree with me. But yeah, if you like this more science-y type of video and you'd like to see more, please let me know down below below in the comments or if you have any suggestions for other videos please let me know about that too and if you'd like to support me like subscribe share and please consider becoming a member to gain access to my exclusive discord for members only and that's about it may Allah bless you all assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh